up, girl? Got fried. Okay. Got these kids in the background and shit. This is for the magazine. What? Here they go. Sure, daughter. No, like I thought it was like a picture of the magazine. Like a uh, spotlight. Yeah, for what? Yeah, I think it was the little club. I see a picture of you also. Right? It was a picture of me. Was there? Yeah. For what? I was uh, number three essay in double ring in the company. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, there we go. They gave you a plaque. Oh, that's right. Oh, it's not it's not one. One. What's your call, baby? You have had a big text me yesterday. He's been texting me. I call him. I saw my my call two days ago. I saw my call yesterday. I just, I just... Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, good morning, guys. <laughs> morning, morning, time. <laughs> quick, quick, mic check. This <laughs> thing's working. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know. My battery might die. If it does, I'll just switch the microphones over. Um, but anyways, uh, let's uh, let's get down to business today. We don't have the 830 huddle with all the SGAs. They only wanted to do that during um, the month of uh, July. So the SGA contest, just to let you guys know, it's a July and then uh, October contest. So it's a two-month contest. They take the top four teams from July, and they, they move them to November for uh, a championship. Well, they did that last year. I'm not exactly sure exactly who's going to be moving in, but they'll announce that probably in the next week or two to let us know if we're still going to be competing with all of our team. And, uh, and then the winning team in this whole competition gets a bunch of cash. So if that's our team, uh, believe me, I'm not taking it and putting it in my pocket. We'll, we'll definitely use that for something fun. Maybe we could put it towards the Christmas party and do something nuts. 
make the Christmas party just out of control this year. You know, we'll, we'll hire like, I don't even know. We'll, we'll hire a performer to come. Okay. <laughs> Do something cool. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we're still in the, the, uh, the, the, the tournament still in the, in the competition for the, for the SGAs. Um, but let's, uh, let's go over here to, um, uh, notes from the SGA meeting. So this week we, uh, met all the SGAs and they're going to put a new slide into the presentation for Google reviews. So, um, just to help with everything, uh, get Google reviews. So when you're doing your PowerPoint presentation with the clients, they're going to give us a slide. If you want to use it, use it, but we do not want to add any more time to the presentation. So he said, <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, definitely can't do that. So he said, um, find a way to tie it into the presentation, okay, to where you can maybe cut something out or, or like I've been saying, what do you think, what do you think I'm going to say about Google reviews? Do it while you're filling out the application, while the client's just sitting there doing nothing, you know? And I remember when I was sitting at, at, the, at the place to get all my, remember I was homeless for a month and a half? Well, I had all my stuff in storage. I remember uh, I had all my stuff in storage. And, and while I was sitting, the lady was like, oh, this computer, it takes me a while to fill this out. You know what? While I'm filling this out. And she showed me that they had this like little like thing sitting next to their, I'll just use a book as an example. But it was like this like thing was just sitting there on, on a table and it said like rate us on Google or something like that. Give us a Google review. So she like took my attention. She's like, hey, and grabbed it. She's like, hey, can you if you could, if you could go on here and just set it right in front of me. She's like, wow, I'm filling this out and just get that done. Right. So, you know, um, anyways, they're going to put a slide into it, but don't take any more time. We don't want death by PowerPoint. That's what that what they quoted there. Right. All right. Um, uh, keeping our, ourselves engaged into the recruiting process. Uh, we haven't used our RMS pool at all since we've been here. Like maybe a little bit, but I'd say barely at all. Does anybody know what RMS is even? This is, this is the question. See, some of us might not even know what it is, right? Um, some of us might have called. I think Mason, I think Mason, did you call RMS before? Mason called RMS. He knows. Matt James, you know what RMS is? Kinda, right? So the company gives us resources, you know, and they'll give us 200, 300 per MGA team. So we might get a thousand a week of these things. These are resumes that have been generated through the company and they give them to us for free, right? And then it's our job to call them, email them, and text to recruit. Those are the three vehicles up front that we can use to recruit people. Back in the day, if this was the 80s, we would be like, call them. And they were, what else can we do? Like, call them up. <laughs> that was the answer. Or you know what you could do if this was the 80s, guys? We could go buy the white pages. You can, you can go buy, it's a book. I don't know if you guys know what the white pages are, but it's a big, thick book, okay? And then you find, you go to like the, you found like, I've been, I've been calling Frederick Johnson and he's not answering. So we could go into the white pages, find the J's, go down to the Johnson's, find the Frederick Johnson that matches the address or whatever, you know, or fi find the person's address and then maybe door knock them or something. I don't know. You know, I don't know what we would, I'm just trying to think like, if it was the eighties, what would we do? We have options now, which is cool. We have options in order to you know, recruit people. Back in the day, there was no text to recruit. There was no texting. There was no emails, right? So don't forget about that stuff when you have A, a recruit, and B, a lead, okay? With recruiting, I feel completely comfortable contacting them through any of the social media outlets. Hey, Joe, uh, we've been trying to connect with you because your resume got sent in to us and I came across you on, you know, this, I won't even say anything. So I figured I'd reach out to you 
and see if you are still interested. Uh, what's what's? I'll tell you what. That's a lot cheaper than than, than taking that name, crossing off list, and 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 going to buy a new name because those names are expensive. Uh, Melissa's done lead generation. You know, it's not cheap by any means. It costs money, don't it? But more importantly, you know what it costs? Time. What's that? Uh, so your uh, your face was glitching out. It was, yeah. it was like it was like a robot for a Ah, sorry. No, you're good. It just was funny. So, so anyways, it, it costs a lot of time and money to go generate new resources. So my thought process is. Instead of trying to buy a new lead, let's just make sure that I took the, I mean, the time that it would take Melissa to generate a new lead is a lot more than it would take her to send the current lead a DM. That's copy and pasted, you know? So just think about that with the recruiting. And second of all, think about that with uh, leads, the leads that we have. You know, sometimes we'll get a, a, a POS or something or, or hard card or, or, or a will kit even. And, and we'll call them and we'll say, bad phone number. Give me a new lead. Right? That's a lot of time and money that's going to take us to generate all that. Then I got to take the new lead. I, somebody ought to go into the system, put it into your packet. Like there's a lot of stuff that has to happen there when all we could have did is hopped on to, we don't even have to carry around the white pages anymore. Oh, you could just go right on your phone or, or onto the White Pages app, I believe, or right onto your White Pages. There's got to be a way that you can Google the person's name, you know, in the same time that it takes you to send me an email saying I need the stuff replaced. You could have had a, a DM sent to the person or an email or a text message. Or you could have, like, uh, you know, um, found out their their other phone number through white pages keep in mind how, how many of you guys have changed cell phone numbers you know i haven't i've made it a point to keep my number <laughs> but you know how many people change phone numbers and i'll tell you over the past few years someone that filled their lead card out three years ago had a home phone now they don't have a home phone anymore you know so a lot of people are getting rid of the home phones. They're switching phone numbers. They're moving. Like some people move from California to Illinois. They don't. They need an Illinois, you know, area code. So all that stuff. Um, so check this out though. We got recontracted with Career Builder at the beginning of the year. So um, if you are calling through RMS, a lot of the stuff are brand new, haven't been called at all. Just so you guys know, and they're from. If you get Career Builders from there. Just so you know, that's a free resource. If you want RMS, tell your um, MGA. He'll get them into your hands. You could call them, set them. They're yours. They're yours. It only takes one. Imagine if you recruited just one geo. Imagine if you had one geo on your squad, you know? I say, well, imagine if you just recruited me one day. Because I'm out there, guys. I'm out there. There is a hungry, hungry, hungry immigrant family person that will literally do anything and 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 they'll buy you a new pair of shoes every every the every, every freaking week they'll take you to lunch five times a week because they'll be so freaking appreciative that you call their phone number there's people out there like that there's people that are so appreciative they're so appreciative like so appreciative there's people out there like that i'm telling you and they won't make no excuses at all because they already know what it's about and it takes one of them, just one, one, you know? Not saying that was me, but it was me. That, that, that was me. I just needed the opportunity. I just needed someone to sit down with me and just show me the numbers. That's what I do on a weekly basis. Every Tuesday at, at 11 a.m., I sit down with all the new people in the agency and I go over the career opportunity with them. I go over with them, the numbers. And I sit there and they can ask me all the questions that they want. And I keep it 100% real with them, you know? So, so um, 
every Tuesday at 11, if you have any new people that want to be in leadership, like I said, I, I just spent tons of time this week. Uh, last week, it was with Ben's personal. Last week, I spent a tons of time with Ben's personal. Guess, guess who got real fired up about that? Ben, guess who's appreciative to work for the agency? Ben, man, this agency is great. I bring my personals in. The SGA spends time with them for a freaking 45 minutes, one-on-one. -on -one. I have time in my schedule every week to do that with your people, for you. Do you think your people are going to quit or stay? Be more successful or less successful, Marissa? What do you think is going to happen if they spend 45 minutes with me? More or less? Say more. Why are, you know what I'm saying? Take advantage of that. Um, but we got, we, I, I, I go over that and I want to go over that with you guys, actually. Um, any questions with RMS? Anything uh, that you guys have? Any questions before I move on with this? No? Uh, training on how to use RMS. Okay. Um, the company is going to do a training for us on how to use RMS on the back end. So we're going to be able to pull our system. And if you tell me that you're like, Tommy, I've been really um, getting with these retail people because I used to do retail. And if you put me in front of anybody in retail, I'll be able to recruit them. I will go in there and I'll find all the retails. We'll type in the keywords. They're going to teach us how to do that. Boom, we'll get you all. Who's the bartenders? Who's the servers? Who's, who's, who's the waiters, waiters, waitresses? I'll get valet. Boom. You want the valet case? I'll get you the valet. Me and Casey used to run Crusader Valet in the South Side for a long time. I used to be a waiter. I was horrible at it. Just a quick story. I was horrible at being a waiter. I would mess everything up all the time. And uh, so the, the, the owner of the restaurant came up to me and he was like, hey, Tommy. He's like, you know, I got these valet guys. They're not very sharp. You know, I got to pay them all kind of money. Um, he's like, would you, would you want to maybe take over doing the valet? And, and, and he went to Canavan. So that's why he liked me because he played football at Canavan Catholic High School where I went to high school. And uh, so, so that's why he hired me in the first place. And then, and then he's like, why don't you call Crusader Valet? Because we were the Canavan Crusaders right? So then I'm like, all right, we'll call Crusader Valet. And I ended up calling Casey and, and, and my buddy Q. And we end up starting up this, this, this valet business from scratch when we were 16 years old in the middle of Southside Pennsylvania on, on Southside Pittsburgh on 21st Street. But, um, but that's our first business together. That was us being entrepreneurs when we were 16. We said, what are we going to do? Let's charge them three bucks a car. Okay. Three bucks a car. We charged them. And we figured everybody would give us five and we'll get a $2 tip, right? And the owner made us kick him back a dollar per car for insurance, because uh, one time Casey got a car stolen, and the other time I, I lost some lady's keys. So I had to drive her all the way home on a Friday night, and she sat in the back seat of my car yelling at me because I ruined her night. But anyways, um, any, anyways, anyways, so if you know somebody who did a valet business, we'll type in valet, you could get all the valet people. You know, if you, you know, so, so keep that in mind, colleges, guys, colleges, realize colleges are going to be going back very soon. Right. But there, that doesn't mean there's so many people that graduated that still don't know what the heck they want to do with their lives. You know, you imagine when you graduate, you don't just, there's a lot of college graduates that are still just sitting in their parents' basement right now, you know? Um, one way that my dad recruited a whole bunch of people when I started was he, he went to his friends cause he's 50, he's 50. So he went to his friends who were all what 50. And he's like, well, all my, my son's graduated college within the last three years. I bet you my friends probably have kids that either a graduated or B are graduating. Right. So he called all his friends that he knew had kids that are grad. Hey, my son just graduated. He was a financial advisor for three years. He left that because this amazing opportunity came up. Remember how I told you he was a financial advisor? He left that because there's even better opportunity. And, and he's actually starting a team. He can get your son in. He can get your son on. So he, he used that, that approach. So if you know people that are older, they know people that also that are older, and they got people that are younger. 
So you got to play every every angle on, on the recruiting game. Um, but but anyways, uh, da, 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 da. let me keep going here. OK. Control what you can control. Don't let the uncontrollable take control. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that is uncontrollable. And when we focus on that, we give it power. And then now that has control of us. So now you have something that's uncontrollable controlling you. And then you feel like you're out of control. <laughs> the only time we feel like we're out of control is when we focus on things that are out of our, out of our control. That's the only time, you know? But I want you to know this, when things get out of control, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. And you got to stop and address it. You have to stop and you got to, you got to literally go like this. Shit's getting out of control. I got to put my foot down. Like, I'll be honest with you. Um, what, I hurt my arm. Shit got out of control. I haven't worked out since. I mean, and that's a bullshit excuse. I mean, it was hurting pretty bad, but I could have did lay. I could, I could have did, um, what are they called? Uh, calf lifts i could have did calf raises you know what i'm saying i could have probably did sit-ups so i was making excuses and i i realized it's out of control my diet was getting out of control and it wasn't because i was focusing on things that i couldn't control you know this isn't one of those situations where you're focused on things that you gotta focus. no this was just basically shit was getting out of control and and i had enough of it and, and I had to be aware of it and I had to address it. I can't just go, oh, I'm going to keep on letting shit be. No. So, so it's okay. I want you to know, guys, it's okay. Everybody in the world, even the most successful people are not freaking perfect. Everybody's not perfect. Everybody has situations. They'll have weeks, days, a month. They'll have periods where certain parts of their lives get out of control. And it's okay. You're not going to be perfect in every situation. Maybe you're getting good on mind, body, spirit, and then your freaking schedule's out of control now. My appointment count's low. My referrals are low. This is out of control. I better get this back on pace. Now that now this is rocking, my recruiting's out of control. What the heck? I haven't had a hire in two weeks. This is out of control. I haven't had anybody in the company overview it. And, you know, we do three of them a day. Right? So you should be like, dude, I need one in every day. So like, what's today? Thursday. We had three on Monday, three on Tuesday, three on Wednesday, three on Thursday. Well, we had, we had what, three, we had, we had 12, uh, nine of them so far, right? I would be like, this is out of control. I don't have anybody in nine, nine of them all week long. I have one person sitting in nine company overviews. So all I got to do is go on their phone. Gio, how many personals did you have in this week? I'm going to call Gio out and tell his ass to leave from the front, bro. Get some personals in, dog. I should have more personals in here than you. I shouldn't. I should not. I already been through all my personals. When I was 13 years ago, I was starving. I was so freaking hungry. I would, I would have recruited a dog. I literally would have recruited Buster. I had a whole seven hours with his, with his ass. Believe me, seven hours with me in the car. I would have recruited freaking Buster. And, and if I could tie the presentation around a dog's neck and send Buster out, his, his Buster would sell. I already would know. Plus, he's Melissa's dog, so she probably teaches him how to sell without him knowing it. It's, it's uh, osmosis, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so Buster, I tie the shit around Buster's neck and send his out there. I was so hungry. I didn't care who came on my, I was recruiting old ladies with canes that couldn't walk. And we had to go to homes and walk upstairs and she couldn't walk up the damn stairs, but I fucking recruited her anyways. That's how hungry I was. And that's my belief level. Changing people's lives. Like Ashley got me a shirt. I wish I had it on right now. Way better than this. Her shirt said changing people's lives. Who would you yeah. recruit? Who are you recruiting? What are you doing? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, bro. Let's go, bro. Come on. I'm say I'm I'm calling you out.
Since I lived in this house for the past three months, I got three personal recruits and all they did is knock on my door. Three. My dad got a personal recruit the first day we moved into my house. True story. We're in my house. My dad's like, you got this control four system. You got all these TVs. You got this sound system. None of it works. He's like, who should I call? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, I'm going to call the real estate agent. He called the real estate agent who was right up the street. Real estate agent said, I don't know. Call this guy, Gary Singer. It was a Sunday. It was a Sunday. He called Gary Singer on a Sunday. Gary Singer says, I'll come over today. He came over to my house on a Sunday. People are hungry. You think if he had full belly syndrome, my dude will be coming over on a Sunday? He likes to help people, but I don't think he likes to help people that much. It's a sound system. It, it ain't a doctor like, hey, doc, I need you. My son's sick. Okay. It, it was my sound system. He comes over on a Sunday. Why? He wants money because he's hungry. So Gary comes over. My dad's talking to him, right? Before he leaves, recruited him. Gary Singer's in the pipeline. He come over to my house the other day to hook the stuff up. I'm so sorry, Tommy. I've been busy. I really, I, he's like, tell him, he's like, Tommy, it's killing me alive. And all I want to do is start working with you. And every time I come to your meet, that meetings are great. Money meetings are great. I, I, I get more. So I'm telling you, like, how, how, how's my dad get more personal recruits than y'all? You know, come on. Make it a purpose. Send the DMs. Are we sending 10 DMs a week? Or are we making excuses? I just got to tell you guys this. I got tons of notes to go over, but I'll just tell you this now, okay? I think like you get it. I think we get it, but people get it to certain levels, the degrees. Geo, I just got to say, like I just noticed that Geo gets it better better than others when it comes to this not perfect by any means you know um nobody is but you gotta get this okay i want you to really get this some of us i hope we get this okay we there, there's 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 areas we need to execute in okay we need to execute you're either going to make the tackle or you're going to not make the tackle. You got to execute the tackle. You got to take them down. You're going to make the play or you're not going to make the play. You're going to execute or you're not going to execute. Okay. And the thing is that's success or not success. If you execute, you're what? Successful. If you did not execute, then you just were not successful in that game, in that play, in that moment, in that sale, on that phone call for the week, for the month, for the year, whatever it is, whatever your goal was this year, I wanted to, uh, I don't know this year. I wanted to um, uh, make $6 million. Okay. Well, you made five, 5 million and, and 5 million, 5.2. Okay. Well, you were not successful there. Right. Whatever your goal is for, for the week, you wanted to collect 40 referrals, you collected 32. Well, you were not successful. You did not, act. you guys get it, right? So, so now it comes down to, well, what happened, right? And, and, and you'll find out that if you have excuses, that's why you weren't successful. So, so you got to get this. It's, 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 you're either successful or you have excuses. There's only two things that can happen. That's where we got to get it. If you say any other words in between there, it's excuses, which is baloney. You might buy baloney for yourself. Like if you go shopping, and you buy a half a pound of bologna and you, nice. and you get a half a, 
you, 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 you get a half a pound of Land O'Lakes American cheese. Okay. Come on. Then, then, then you go get some. Hopefully you get Hellman's and not Miracle, Miracle Whip. I'm a Hellman's guy. I'm not a Miracle Whip guy. <laughs> Who said that? We pushed mayonnaise color, color cars. I pushed Miracle Whips. Who said that? Kanye West. Kanye West. Pusha T or Kanye West? I think they're on the same track. Kanye West. Okay, that was Kanye, right? But, you know, that's the only, only Miracle Whip I'll have <laughs> if I get the all-white Rolls Royce. But... Um, <laughs> But 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 you know the that's baloney. You might you might you might buy baloney, but don't try and sell me baloney because I don't buy it. You know what I mean? It might sound good to you. It sounds good when you're saying it. It does. Oh, but uh, but, but I'm from a new city. Oh. Oh, but my mom used to take care of me and now I got to cook my own noodles. Oh, but my girlfriend, my boyfriend broke up with me. That might sound good, but when you go to the bank to cash your check, when you go to the bank to cash your check, it's not going to buy you anything. That's the harsh reality. And some of us are acting like kids. We need to grow up. You got to get rid of your excuses. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. It's a bunch of baloney. The only person that's going to sound good is to you and your mommy. That's the only person the excuses sound good to. I swear, call your mom up and tell her that shit. And she's like, oh, you're right. I feel bad for you. It makes sense. I completely understand. Sure. Yeah. Regardless, you didn't get the job done. I don't know who you're trying to sound good for. You didn't get the job done. Does this make sense? I'm not trying to be harsh or anywhere. I'm just trying to like make you, because I want you guys to realize you're going to be coaching up people that are not the nine, they're not one percenters they're, they're and we're trying to get them there. And this is a huge part of being a one percenter, man. Huge part. Because one percenters execute. But the problem is you'll never even get close to the execution line and you'll still be hanging out over an excuse land. It's a different language. Like I, I, I had to like harshly tell some people before, like, the guy, like, I don't understand what you're saying to me right now. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying to me. And, and maybe I could pull up the translator app. Because when I was in Italy, I didn't understand what they were saying to me either. I was trying to get from, from Roncillion, okay, to Rome. Because we were going to Roma. We were going to Stadium Olimpico so we could watch Ed Sheeran perform. The only time he ever performed in Rome. On a Sunday night, it was amazing. Full moon, I can't even tell you. Uh, but I couldn't get, I had to tell the guy, he pulled his phone out. He said, here, talking to this. So I had to say it in English. And then he pulled it up and it showed it to him in Italian, right? So I had people come up to me. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds like you're speaking a different language. It sounds like you're speaking excuses. I don't speak excuses. I don't speak Portuguese. I'm speaking success and results and winning. That's what I'm trying to speak. What are you talking about? Are you seriously wasting your breath? Don't waste your breath trying to sell me baloney. I ain't buying it. You know, those excuses might sound good to somebody else. And I want you to just, number one, for ourselves, remember, we got to have this conversation with ourselves, you know? And then also just when you're trying to coach, you know, obviously people up to be champions, man. I'm raising champions. I want my son to be a champion. Son, there's no excuses. You either got the job done or you didn't. What was that? The ref? I don't want to hear about the ref. The ref. The ref. It shouldn't have been that close. It shouldn't have been that close. Talk about it. 
That's the mentality. It should have never been that close. Oh, but I got a, I got a bad lead pack. Well, you should have had 50 referrals to call until I got you some new leads. What do you mean you had a bad day? You should have had 50 referrals to call. Get out of here. Get out of here. How long have we been here? If you've been here for one year and you collected 10 referrals a week and put them in impact, you'd have 500 that you put in impact. If you did 30 referrals a week, which is the minimum, you'd have 1,500 referrals in impact over the last year. It shouldn't have been that close. You're making it closer than it needs to be right now. Everybody's right here is performing at half of the speed and half of what we should be getting done. Referrals are going to unlock it all. Christina's had her biggest month. You go back, she's crushing it with referrals. Look back when you had your biggest weeks and biggest months. Typically wasn't with the leads. So anyways, with personal recruiting, I am not accepting any excuses on this. You move to a new city, I don't give a shit. All your friends are crackheads. I don't give a shit. I'm 47 years old and I'm a mom and I don't, I don't give a shit. Your job is to personal recruit because if you can't personal recruit, how are you going to teach other people how to personal recruit? And I'm going to keep personal recruiting. I'm not going to stop and I'm going to start running circles around all y'all and show you what it's about. I'll start doing it. Josh, where's your personals? Let's go. Where they at? Let's go. I know where my personals at. They're on your team. Where'd Javon come from? My personals. That's right. Where'd Georgia CC come from? My personals. Where's Mason from? My personals. Where's Austin from? My personals. Where's Casey from? My personals. Where's Josh from? My personals. Just on this call. I ain't afraid to go out there and talk to anybody and recruit anybody is the best opportunity on planet earth. Come get some. Casey, where's your personals? You've been here. Oh, you've been here. You've been here. You've been here. Where they at? You've been here. You've been here. Hey, I got four at the mall uh, last where? week. Where? Four. I don't, so I don't see them. them. I, don't, I don't see them. Where? Where? I, I, I got to get them. I, I got the ALP report right here. They ain't on the ALP report. I'm just saying, I'm going to start calling you guys out. Let's go. Let's go. This is all in good love. I love and care for you. This is me calling my son out because he could be better. He should be better. He should be winning. He should be dominating. He's playing like an average player right now at best, at best. Ryan Wilson, come on, bro. You came in hot and heavy. Where's all your team? I was expecting you to have freaking 100 people by now. And sorry that I expect the best from my, my, my people. Sorry that I expect the absolute best in greatness. I'm sorry. Oh, it's too much pressure. Too much. Well, I expect greatness. My son can't be like, oh, my dad puts all, I don't put tons of pressure on him. I just expect greatness from him. That's it. I'm not putting tons of pressure on you, bro. I expect excellence and I expect greatness. That's what I expect. I expect you to not quit. I expect you to show up every day. You're not allowed to miss a day. Like my son was throwing up yesterday. I was trying to drag him to football practice. My mom and my wife are yelling at me. Tommy, he, he, he laid on the floor. He couldn't move. I said, all right, you're going to stay home. But guess who went to football practice? Me. And guess where all the coaches were like, why are you here? Like, I told you I was going to coach. Just because my son's not going to be here don't mean I'm not going to show up and not coach the team. I was talking to players, coaches, my, my, my one, the, the, the parents afterwards, the parent, she was, she was like, uh, it was this Tommy's friends, Wolfie, her mom. He, she was like, She's like, where's Tommy? I was like, he wasn't feeling good. She's like, then you came to practice today? I'm like, yeah, I told him my coach, you know, I'm still going to show up just because my son ain't here. I'm still going to show up. I committed to something. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what we do. When we commit to something, we commit to something, you know, like this is marriage. This is a marriage for me. You know, I got married into AIL and then I got married into my wife. That's it. You know? So, um, so let me hit on some notes here, okay? Uh, and does everybody know the personal recruiting script? I don't even want to waste time going over that, right? Everybody should know that. That works. I, I'm telling you, I could go over it right now. It works. I promise you, I just did it three times. Works every time. Uh, some of you guys probably met Austin. That's one of my personal recruits. Came in, superstar stud. 
right? He was in the office yesterday. He brought five people with him, four or five? How many people did he bring with him? Four, four. He brought four people with him, right? So I got my personal recruit already bringing in more personal recruits to the office, right? Got a team of five built. How many of you got a team of five right now? How many of you got a team of five? I just built a team of five right there, like that, but opening my mouth by saying words. Wasn't hard. Not even trying yet. Get me out in the streets. Get me out in the streets. Everybody said it's open up. Let me go out there. And believe me, I don't need to drive around in my nice car. I don't need to be flashing around all kind of shit. I could just go out there. I got, I got, I got the biggest weapon, which is my mouth. I'll show up in a hoodie and a backwards hat. I don't need to have a Rolex on. I could even I'll put my chain in, nothing on my wrist. You can dress me for the day. You dress me for the day. I'll go out there. I'll take the challenge. I'll get more personal. That's the confidence, right? Hopefully, it's, I, listen, if one person on this thing this inspires you to go out there and have the most amazing freaking career of your life because you realize that it's all about personal recruiting and F everything else, because if you can win on personal recruiting, I promise you, everything else is going to take care of itself. That's why I won. That's why I won. Because I won on personal recruiting, and then I taught all my people how to do the same thing. And I held them to a high standard. Because I'm, what, bro, I just brought 10 people in the group this week. You told me you want to be a millionaire? Last I checked, I'm a millionaire. What they tell me. Last time I checked. Why am I still hungry? Are you, shouldn't you be more hungry than me? Why would I have more personals in than you if I'm already there? I'm already good. I already get 20 some grand a month. That takes $8 million in the bank. I'd have to have $8 million saved up right now in the bank to get 22 grand a month. Your uncle, your, your dad, your mom, Chris over there who lives down the street, if he wants to get it, he'd have to have $8 million. We don't have to do that. So, so I'm just trying to drive that point home, okay? Um, during the hiring process, just make sure you remind me, don't over-promise and under-deliver. I would rather us under-promise and over-deliver. So I always try and under-promise. I always try. If I show them a number, I say, you know what? Let's cut it in half. So here's what we got to do. It's, it's a process of, 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 of hiring. So we have to master hiring, have to master the hiring process. Number one, you have to have resources and recruits to put into the process. Typically, you would, you would vet them a little bit. You would do a first interview with them if possible. So you would talk to them over the phone, at least screen them a little bit, right? Pump them up, get them excited, let them know that they're gonna be meeting with the state director. And he doesn't just meet with anybody, right? So, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna invite you to meet with the state director, all right? Um, but make sure you pay attention, make sure you take notes, all right? And all that. Uh, and then afterwards, there's a questionnaire. You just prep them up. You're going to get a better result if you talk to them first. And, and if you if you don't, if you explain to them the company over, you're like, oh, just sit in here and watch that video. You lost, man. You lost, dude. You got to build it up. Like when I was doing first interviews, I would, I would meet with them in person. So I, I, got a, I got a better impact I could make on them. But over the phone, I would tell them, I, if, if it wasn't in person, you know, I would tell them, like, our state director is actually um, only in town this meet this week, meeting with just a handful of candidates that we felt compatible with, okay? Um, so, so after meeting with you, Joe, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know if this I'm is sure be the best fit. Isn't that counterproductive because it gives you time to think on the overview? What's mm -hmm. going on? Just do do a research. I can believe this. I oh, used to. Are you guys, someone just had a question. What's the question? Yeah, what, what is it? Um, 
doesn't that like uh, contradict itself? Because in the overview, it gives them times to put when we do it like over the phone. Like it's like you can select this time at this day, even though we like confirm a day and time. If they just scroll down, like just shows it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're talking. I'm talking about setting a first, setting the interview, and put them into the group, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, setting the interview, put them into the group, right? They're gonna, you're gonna send them the link. They click on the link, and it comes up with the next three, three uh, times that we're doing it. That's what pops up, right? Don't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's three days. Yeah. No, just the next three times. The next three times pops up. That's all it is. So if I sent you the link right now, all it will pop up will be 10, 2, and 6 today. Those will be the only three times it will pop up on that link, right? right. If I send it to you at 2 o'clock or three, at 4 o'clock today, then the 6 o'clock tonight, oh. the 10 o'clock tomorrow, and the 2 o'clock tomorrow will be your next three options. Does that make sense? It does it, it does it for the next three days. Shake. For the next three oh, days. Yeah. So I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. So nine times pop up? Yeah. 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 So here's what we do. We just okay, we go. All right. Well, I like that. That's fine. Let's just say that. Yeah. Our state director's only in town for the next few days. He's going to be meeting with just yeah. a handful of candidates that we uh felt compatible with. All right. And he has only specific times he's gonna be meeting with these candidates. That's it. I mean, it doesn't conflict with anything. So he's going to be, uh, he's only going to be in town for the next few days, meet with just a handful of candidates. Um, and I would tell them, here's the key point. Okay. You're overthinking things. Okay. Listen, you got to tell them this, this is the key point. We got to sell them. So I, I would almost take it away and scare them. This is what I was telling you what I would do. I would tell people, I would say, um, I would tell them, uh, I say at this point, I'm not sure uh, if this is going to be the best fit or not for you. I mean, we only spoke for a couple minutes here. So, so, uh, but what I do think is if we spend a little bit more time together, then I feel like you're, you're going to know, and we're going to know more of whether or not it does make sense for us to move forward. So I caught you on a great time because our state director is actually in town this week, and he's going to be meeting with a handful of candidates that we did feel compatible with. Um, and, uh, and I'd like to invite you to meet with him. All right. Uh, and and uh, basically, it looks like he has times available just for the next three days, but he's going to be meeting with candidates uh, over the next three days. I'll send you the link over, blah, 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 you know. So, so anyways, we would, we, would, we would usually talk to them first. Then they go into the company overview, then they fill that JOT form out. When the JOT forms get filled out, we got to call them back as soon as possible. The longer that you wait to call those JOT forms back, the worst it is. So call them back as soon as it comes in and get them booked for as soon as you possibly can. If you can book them same day, if they're excited to book them same day, book them same day. Now that's where we're at. Uh, we used to try and keep them in the office and just enroll them right into a hire, you know? So, so book them same day. They're ready to go. They're fired up. Um, plus it just, if you have six candidates, I mean, might as well get at least one of them done today. So you got five, you could do tomorrow or something. So it takes a, geo has been there before. I mean, you, you before you know it, you, you, your week's going to pile up and you're going to have 20 hires. You all got to do on Friday. Cause you keep pushing them off, try and get them, get more done today. So book them same day or the next day. Then when you do your third interviews, you know, make sure you're, you're uh, obviously doing them the right way. We want to hire the right people. So, so Gio has a situation where he's like, Tommy, I, I, I was getting excited with hires. I just wanted to get a bunch of hires. I think I might've hired one or two people that maybe I shouldn't have hired. Right. So, so in all the stuff that's going on, a guys, we can't not hire them the right way. So you can't be skipping stuff or just flying through and be like, Oh yeah, just get your license. You're going to make a million bucks. Call me on Monday. That's probably not mm -hmm. the best way to hire somebody. You know what I mean? Right. You got to let them know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> so, so, you know, when you hire them, hire them the right way. Number two, hire the right people, hire the right people. Um, I do that pipeline call. And uh, I think you guys had a person on the pipeline call at one time where I was like, all right, this is not good for culture right here. There was this lady who hopped on and she was like sitting there like, this, like, 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 like we were killing her. Like, 
I'm like, uh-huh. I had to call her. I was, excuse me, Susie, are you okay? <laughs> right. Uh-huh. So that was probably not hiring the right person. I don't know who hired that person or not, but um, you know, we want to hire the right people. But then the third part, guys, is our job to give them the right training. We got to give them the right training, you know? So, and all that is systematic. It's all systematic. But from the hire until getting them into training is a very big process that cannot be uh, um, underestimated. Number one, if you're an SA or you're a GA and, and you're not doing anything pipeline management right now and your MGA is doing all the pipeline management, you better give them some praise. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to manage the entire pipeline. It's a lot of work. And it takes a great skill set to do so. But I feel like all that can be leaned onto a system. So like, don't feel like, oh, I'm no good at this part of the business. Let's put a system in place and we can get you good at that part of the business. Don't feel like, oh, I'm horrible at pipeline management. Well, maybe maybe your pipeline management is horrible right now, but you're not horrible at pipeline management. Your pipeline management is horrible. You're not horrible at it. You just don't got a system in place for it. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm horrible at collecting referrals. No, you're not horrible at collecting referrals. Now, your referral collection results can be categorized as potentially horrible <laughs> or terrible, you know, but you're not terrible at collecting referrals. You just don't have a good system for collecting. So a system is this. It's, it's just um, saying the right thing the right way at the right time, you know? Pipeline management is the same thing. Are you calling the pipeline at, at a certain time? And when you call them, are you saying the right thing the right way to them? You know, that's pretty much what it is. So, uh, so, but pipeline management is such a huge, huge part of the business. You know, I've seen people crush it with hires, but their teams barely grow because in between nobody ever passes their test or comes through, or they do come through, but they come through the wrong way. I, I see people come through and they're like, oh, get them in the training class. They put them in the training class. They don't even know their script. You're just, that's a hole in the boat. So there's like so many very important things that are variables. Some managers are good at all of them. Some of them have a little bit of cracks here and there. And it's all in communication. It's all in communicate what takes time and organization. And, and we don't got time to mess around when, when you're really, really busy. So, so you know, I, I did write on here, you know, pipeline management and then, and then training, making sure the training's on point, which is systematic. If you're like, oh, the last person that I trained ended up being good at these areas, but not good at this area. Well, let's change that system up a little bit, put a better system in place to where next time that doesn't happen with the training. Oh, well, they... Maybe, maybe your trainee came in and didn't know the script. Did that ever happen to anybody before? That's, that's one of the worst ways to start out a relationship, you know, in a career. Um, you want to make sure that they know the script. You're going to be more excited to train them. You're either going to be excited or then you're going to feel like you're, you're doing all this work and training somebody up and, you know, they're not doing their part. So um, but putting a system in place to make sure this happened to me so many times where people were coming in and not knowing their script. Okay. So what system did we put in place to ensure that they know their script? Anybody know what, what we do? Let's say we have training class. When's the next training class start guys on 16th. What? the 16th, 16th, the 16th is the next training class, right? Yes. If somebody needs to be in the 16th training class, when do they need to know the script by? The ninth. By the ninth, right? So you have to tell them, you got to know your script verbatim, 100%. Like you're going to be going on stage, like you're going to be forming the uh, Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl. You know, mm-hmm. if somebody missed one word on the Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl, one word, everybody in the whole country would be calling them out, Right. That's how you need to know this script. I mean, that's that. The, give them all the analogies you can. 
remember when you're describing stuff to people, it's going to take two or three analogies for them to get it. And sometimes it's the weirdest and wackiest ones that stick with them. <laughs> so, you know, don't be afraid to use analogies. Um, so the, 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 the script though, making sure you know that um, completing the training process. Okay. And completing the release process, which I hate saying that word. Okay. Don't say release. Okay. But um, becoming an agent and then completing the, what does it mean to complete the training process? You want to know what the company just adopted? In order to complete the training process, you have to give a hundred presentations. You haven't completed the training process until you've given a hundred presentations. Wonder where I got that from. <laughs> they had me on these calls and I kept preaching it. Three, three different calls. I told everybody about it. So David's <laughs> off and gone with it from us guys. Cause nobody Sorry. in the company was so hell bent on a hundred presentations. Like, like we have been, we, five years ago, I had a contest called zero to a hundred real quick. Like, and everybody in the agency went to zero. So imagine today we all went to zero presentations and we all raced to see who could give a hundred. That actually is, sounds like a good idea again, don't it? I'd yeah, like to try good. that out. I'd like to try that out. Let's start that in, uh, in uh, October, November, and December over those three months to end yeah, the year. Yeah. To end the year. Yeah. We'll do it. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Because well, we, we got September sickness coming up. Don't forget, we got September sickness. You know, um, but the company said 100 presentations will complete your training process. Make sure that you complete the training process on at least one trainee per month. Some of us are trying to grow exponentially, and some of us are training five people a month. And that's great. That's what I would do because time is going to fly by. So, but without having too much pressure and to still make sure that you're going to grow your business and be successful, you're going to be, you're going to get there. If you train one person a month, at the end of the year, you have 12 people that you've trained up. That's a solid situation to be in after one year. Before you know, one of those, two of those people were able to start getting into management and your team will start growing. And then you still train one person a month, but now you have two people that are supervisors on your team and they train one person a month. Now your team's growing three times as fast. So, so that's nothing crazy. Don't put crazy pressure on yourself where you feel like you need to be training 20 people at once if that's not you. You know, we can grow this thing at our own pace, but at least one per month. <clears throat> okay. Um, check this out. I got crazy good news. Well, it's, it's a potential. It's a big potential, but you guys ready for this? Okay. Sure. The government, the government. Okay. Politics, uh, politics. I'm not a political guy. All right. Um, I could tell you, I don't even really even know what the hell a Democrat and Republican really is at the end of the day, you know? Um, but, but I can tell you stuff that they tell me, <laughs> all right. So, so here's what I heard. Um, the, the, the PR team got on yesterday and they start talking to us about, uh, the unions. Okay. And they start talking to us about the, the politics and, and, and what they, they found is that there's a labor law, the labor law of 1948 has never been changed. No amendments have been made to it at all. This is like right when unions got a little bit of rights. This is when they got a little bit of rights, right? They're, they, they've been polling and protesting and lobbying, major lobbying, to try and get some stuff happening with the Labor Act and reform this thing. So this is like, I, I don't know how public this information is, but I, I tell, I, I'm telling you guys, okay. 62% um, of people in, in workforces that were pulled were asked, they said, they said, 
if you could ju join a union, would you? 62% of workers said they would. That's almost twice as many as wouldn't. You know, pretty much. So 62% so of people would join a union if they could, if they could. But because of the Labor Act or whatever they're saying, there's restrictions on that stuff. Well, um, they're really excited and they wouldn't even have brought this to us if it wasn't like a strong possibility that this is going to get pushed through. But if it does get pushed through okay. and they make these changes, Geo, no, don't go, please. listen, Geo, 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 wait, wait, listen. We're going to go from four. You could go right after this, okay? We're going to go. Know, from, you're from, no, you could go back by the door. Go back by the door yeah. and just run right out. Look at this. 14 million, okay, is how many people are in a union today. This is going to take uh, unions from 14 million to 44 million <laughs> is what they're projecting. We already got tons of unions we can't even call here. We're gonna be able, we're gonna we're gonna need to recruit because we're not gonna have enough people to call all the damn leads we're gonna have. Let's go. Thank you. That's in the next five to ten years. All right. So so uh, I got I signed on as a supporter. Um, it's the Pro Act. It's called it's called the Pro Act. So um, we're hoping this Pro Act gets pushed through. So I thought that was awesome, awesome, awesome news for everybody. Um, so here's here's my notes on the leadership huddle. I'll bang you through. Gia, you're ready to roll yet? Good. All right. So schedule, schedule, schedule. Uh, everybody knows we're in the middle of training right now. The next training class is the 16th. We're running the month all the way to the 30th. So you know, um, the uh, the where are we at here? The the ninth is the sec is going to be the second turn in for the month. The 16th is going to be the third turn in. The 23rd is the fourth turn in and the 30th is the fifth turn in for the month. Okay. I say that uh, and, and I kind of get worried because people might procrastinate, feel like we have more time, right? Um, let's not abuse that situation. You know, let's utilize this. Let's get a jump start and let's make this our biggest month. Uh, 10 or all the contest we have. So the party uh, at the house here, um, we're gonna definitely go all out for the party and make it very, very nice and worthwhile, worthwhile, okay? We're not just gonna have cheese and crackers for everybody, all right? We'll make sure that you you qualified, you, you bring your guests, it was definitely worth worthwhile, okay? Um, that's gonna start at 325 for the month. Last week was week one, guys. We did 40,000 week one. So, you know, this is where I got to coach up on the numbers just so we know where we're at, right? So, you know, if you take, we need 280,000 over the next four weeks, which is 70,000 a week, which is about 70,000 a week. Right now we're sitting at like 20,000 for this week. So over the next four days, you know, by Sunday, we're going to have to come up with 50,000, which is 12,500 a day. If we do that, we'll be at our 70,000 for week two, and we'll be ready to go right into week three. Okay. Recording in progress. Recording stopped. Sure. That's all right. Just let people real quick. Uh, 10K gets the ticket. That's 2,000 a week. Or 10K gets the invite. 6K is going to get tickets for the ticket pool, right? And uh, the ticket pool is going to start at 300000 for the month. The number one person for the month gets $1,000 guaranteed. And then we're going to be doing ticket pools for the additional money. When the agency gets up to $400,000, we'll be able to give away $10,000 in ticket pools. So the real goal is 400,000, which would be basically like 90,000 a week for the next four weeks. So really the, the goal should be 90,000 for the next four weeks and the commitment could be 70,000 for the next four weeks as the agency, okay? 
Uh, don't forget about lunch with Natalie and Fred on the 16th. Uh, week one, the results were out. I could even pull them up for us. Um, but it's the top in recruits, the top in uh, in-home personal recruits, and the top in DM recruits, personal recruits from direct messaging. So are we sending 10 DMs a day like the president said? Just remember, the president flew all the way here, and he could have told us anything. Right? There's yeah. got to be something to it. He said, said, said 10 DMs a day. Okay? So make sure we're sending our 10 DMs a day. We should be able to get one higher a week off of that is what they're saying. I get DMs every day, every day, every day. Like the last one I got was from a guy that actually knows me. I tried recruiting him when I moved out here and, and he sent me this message. So now I'm going to get on the phone with him and try to recruit him again. Here. Hi, Tommy. Hope you're well, my man. And Chicago is treating you right. I've been in the financial services industry since 2008. I'm going to call him up. Mate. I've been in the financial services industry since 2005. What a coincidence, man. <laughs> and just have recently opened a lead generation and marketing firm for advisors, both financial and insurance based. We'd love to learn more about your practice and how we can help you grow. With over 20 years of experience in financial services, we may know something you don't. Check out our website and schedule a demo to receive a discount on your first round of leads. You know how many people send me messages to buy leads off them? There's so many. I would buy them if they were any good. We've tried to buy leads from everybody. I've tried it. I promise you. Simon, when I do free... I'm Simon's partner. He goes, Tommy, check this resource out for me. All right, cool. And I give him my number one person who would handle him the best, like Brian Gilmore or Gio. Gio did it before, actually. Right? I think we tried some out with Gio before. Yeah. All kind of wacky situations. I can't even go into them. But this is another one. I, 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 I'm going to hear this guy out. I'm going to hear him out. But only so that he can empty his tank so that he can hear me out. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to yeah. tell somebody something, but you know that they just, they're, they just got to tell you something, right? So don't tell them something, let them tell you something and let them empty all their tank out. And when they're empty, then you can fill it up with your stuff, right? Same thing with clients, yes. same thing with clients. We're sitting here trying to rebuttal them when you got to let them empty their tank first. You're trying to tell them shit. They, they didn't even finish telling you what they wanted to tell you. So you think they're going to listen to what you're going to tell them? They're just, you, they're literally sitting there waiting for you to stop talking so they could talk. They're not even listening to you. Yeah. Do you ever, you, you, everybody here knows those people. There's people that that's the only way they are. There's like, there's certain people that I don't, there's like certain people that you know that that's like the only way they are. Like any, you know that when you talk to them, they're literally not listening to you. This person is literally just waiting for me to stop talking so they can tell me whatever the heck they want to tell me about the cheese sandwich they had today. You know, like whatever nonsense they want to tell me, how they got cut off, right? So, 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 so uh, that's what it is with the clients. Teach your cl teach your agents that as well. But what recruiting this guy, that's my process. I'm just giving you my game plan on how I'm going to get this guy who DM'd me. And I'm going to flip it on him, right? You want to DM me, huh? See what you got, right? These people want to DM you. You should, you should flip it on them and get them, you know? And then we should be DMing people because if he wants to DM me with some bologna, I'd rather DM people with some steak, some filet mignon. You know what I'm saying? People are DMing bologna all over the place. We got some filet mignon. Let's start flipping that around the, 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 the internet a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Prime, what is that? Prime USDA certified? I don't even know. You go to Costco. I just go to the most expensive steak and I get it. I know it got to be the best. 
five pound, four or five pound. You know, buy the, you could get the most expensive steak, but it could just be a big steak of crap. You got to go buy, buy the buy the pound, like cost per pound. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Buy the pound, nothing nothing can 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 square up with this opportunity. Pound for pound. <laughs> this is Floyd Mayweather. Um, so let's keep the number simple here. All right. Uh, make sure before I go up over this, make sure that every Thursday you look at your advance report before this meeting. Look at this advance, look at your advance report before this meeting every Thursday. Just pull it up, look at it, get an idea of what you got going on and get a jump start on it. Anything that fell off, call it immediately. Call it today. Anything that fell off your advance report, call it today and start getting it back on. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Let's talk about uh, today at 7 a.m. Okay, I wrote that down. Oh, today at 11 a.m. So MGAs, there is a, I think I might've told you guys this. This is a great thing for us. Great thing for us guys. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we like it and I'm hoping that we pull the trigger on it just because I want, I want it to work, okay? I want this to work. Um, and it has worked for other agencies and I've asked, Brody about it and he loves it. Okay. So this is why I'm considering it. Okay. It's called Epic. Did I tell you guys about Epic before? No. Yes. So. Yes, no, sir. Yes. Okay. It's the MGAs. So at 11 o'clock today, the MGAs and I are going to meet with this company and um, it's, it's Zach Hart. Zach Hart. He's, he, he set this up for his agency. He loves it. And he's opening it up to us. Okay. And what it does is it's, it's a program that you hire a new person. And when, when they get their license, when they get their license, okay, we put them on Epic. Epic teaches them all the stuff um, that you really don't want to teach them. It teaches them how to use eApp. Imagine for the next 10 years, you having to teach people e-app every two weeks you'll do it celine imagine how many performances celine dion did in, in las vegas i'm sure she probably got sick of that shit after a while but then she looked at her bank account and i hope she didn't get too sick after that so for the last for the last 13 years of my life, I've been saying the same thing, same exact thing. You guys realize that? I like it. Good afternoon. Oh, we could do better than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you guys doing? My name's Tom Veen. I'm a regional director here with the Aries Agencies American Income. You know, today what we're going to be doing is going over career opportunity. Okay. And, uh, and uh, first of all, I want to make sure everybody has a pen and paper. I mean, I'm a broken record. I've said it so many times, but every time I did it, I knew I'm getting paid. I don't care. I made a million dollars a year. I'll, uh, pay, tell me what you want me to say. I'll say it. Right. Oh. Please don't get sick of this shit. Please don't get sick. of Tom Brady's been playing football for way longer than we've been doing this. Okay. And he's out there winning Super Bowls with passion and excitement and enthusiasm doing the same shit he's been doing since he was 10 years old. Right. So we can't be going through the motions or, or, or taking this for granted. Right. Tom Brady never knew he, I, this could be my last snap. He plays every play like it could be his last play. I mean, that that right there is that that's life. Those are the people that are out there getting it and winning in life. Those are they're playing every play like it's their last play you know, cause they appreciate it. So, um, I know I got off topic a little bit on that. Uh, but, uh, this is going to teach them a couple things. It's going to teach them e-app. So you never got to teach them e-app anymore. It's going to do it for us. It's going to teach them how to use impact huge, right? And it's going to teach them product knowledge, product knowledge, 
And there's some scripts in there, I believe. No, no, actually there's no scripts in there. We can put scripts in there. So if we have scripts that we want them to know, we could put them into this thing as well. And, and it'll be branded with our agency logo on them so that they'll think it's our, they'll think it's like a proprietary thing. So it won't be like Epic or anything, which is, which is nice. So we're gonna meet with them today um, and, and figure all that out. I think it'll be worth it. You know, if it saves you guys some time, um, huge, huge. Right. So that that's something we're going to do at 11 today. All right. So what I what I um, what I went over with with uh, with with the people that are in leadership that go to the, they, they go to this leadership, uh, this meeting on Tuesday. You know what I go over with them. I'm going to touch on real quick. Um, keep in mind next Sunday, which is coming up here Sunday night. Some of us are going to be leaving and going to LDS. So next week we have LDS. Um, I will be at the office on Monday. And then right after the agency meeting, I'm going to leave and then fly down to Texas. And then I'll meet you guys Monday night. I think they're, everybody's going, I think bowling actually. So I think they're running out of bowling alley. Uh, so Monday night, we'll all be going bowling down, down there in, in, in Texas, which will be cool. And then Tuesday, um, jam packed day on Tuesday with some amazing speakers. Uh, they said, this is the biggest in-person LDS 201 ever. On top of that, they said it is the best lineup of speakers that they've ever had for this conference. So, uh -huh. uh, so I'm excited. Uh, um, uh, LB's going to be down there as well, so we'll be we'll be we'll be able to kick it with him, and you know, uh, you'll you'll be able to just it's going to be a, a great great trip. Um, I know we're going to come back better than, than when we left. They have me closing it down uh, pretty much. I'm going to close it down on Tuesday. And then uh, they have Don Bertini is going to make like final announcements. And then we're going to end on Tuesday and, and hit, hit the airport. So um, that, that'll be our, our trip next week. Um, and that's, that's the only thing on the schedule. So, so what, what, you know, what does it take, guys? It takes 24,000 over 90 days to get into a supervisor position, right? Which is basically just $2,000 a week, which is 8,000 a month, right? And how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that, okay? You're, you're gonna have to have about 20 appointments on your schedule, okay? If you have 20 appointments, appointments, now let's change our mind frame on appointments. An appointment is not somebody that I booked um, uh, for Friday on Monday. Okay, if I, if, I, if I on Monday, they can't meet with me on Tuesday and they can't meet with me Monday night and they can't meet with me Wednesday or Thursday and I book them for Friday. That is not a set appointment. Okay. On Thursday, when my manager calls them and confirms that they're going to be there on Friday, that's a set appointment. That's a set appointment. So I think some of us are just um, falsely getting excited, you know, we're getting a false sense of accomplishment or excitement or, or, or false expectations. And we're being let down because we think we said 20 this week, but we set 20 and only 15 confirmed, you know? So, so let's, 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 let's go to real numbers on that. Um, and the way you can change this now is, is you want to score, let's call it points. You want to score 20 points a week. As long as you score 20 points a week, you're going to make 2,000 ALP. As long as you score 20 points. And a point is a confirmed appointment that's set. So, all right, all right, look, if I call today and I book an appointment for tomorrow, that's a, that's a, that's a point. That's a point, okay? But if I call today and I book an appointment for Saturday, that's not a point. But tomorrow, my, my manager confirms it. Now it becomes a point. So now I got two points, right? I'm calling today and I book an appointment for today. Two points. So you, you can count same days as two points. And I swear to you, as long as you score 20 points a week, you're going to make at least 2,000 ALP. Promise. So we got to score 20 points a week, 20 appointments, wherever you want to call it. Okay. Um, so, so really we're looking at, you know, I used, I used to say like, we used to go out four days a week, 
We used to go out four days a week. And, and I said, out of four days, you got to have five appointments set per day. Measure 2020. Now, now we, we literally can work five days a week. Five days a week, score two point, have two points scored a day and be done. So, because they're going to show, they're going to show. Well, you don't have to score four points a day. I'm sorry, five days a week. <laughs> but they're going to show. I mean, think about it. If you have four points a day, five days a week, then you're, if you have four and they're confirmed or you set them that day, you're going to see two. Sure. And if you're seeing two people a day, five days a week, um, you're seeing 10 people a week. First. You're seeing 10 people a week. Be a trade, awesome. And if you see 10 people a week. Okay, it goes back to the to test drive it. Okay, cool. So shall we have a look around the car? Yeah, free to look around the car, but at the moment I have a client on the phone. So just is somebody on there speaking Spanish? That's okay. What's going on? Marvin, can you translate? Yeah, put it off the TV. There we go. We got you back on now. Is that what you guys do when Is I talk you guys to you guys when I your meetings? No, no. It kicked you off and it turned on that, like, Samsung TV stuff for oh, a minute. Okay. All right. I got you. We got you back on now. We can hear you now. I was wondering. Okay. But um, so, so anyways, 24,000 over 90 days. And how do you do this? I want to keep it simple. Uh, you know, we, we sh doing 2,000 a week needs to be for you and us and everybody here just a very simple thing that is not a, it's got to be so simple and so easy and so like tuesday like i what do you mean i write two i write two thousand every tuesday what are you talking about like that's what it needs to be and for most of us it is it is so so just remember that okay and then we have to be able though to make it easy for them so so it has to be something simple simple just keep it real simple so imagine we were doing this, guys. Imagine we were calling on Monday for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for Friday, Saturday, okay? Do you think that you can get five appointments set for Tuesday? Like if I had to ask you like, hey, Marvin, man, can you set five appointments for Tuesday? Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. here would be like, oh my God, that's, I don't know, man, Tommy, that's, you're asking a lot to five. Like, I think everybody here, like, everybody can get five appointments set on Tuesday, right? So if you can get five appointments set on Tuesday and you can get five appointments set on Wednesday, right? Now, that's the first thing. Now, let, now let me tell you this. You're, you're here for a month, two months, six months, don't matter. And I, I say, uh, you know, uh, Pat, hey, Pat, I got this new person. His name is Mason, okay? Um, can, can Mason sit with you? And can you teach him how to set five appointments a day? Do you think that everybody here has the skill set and the training abilities to teach somebody how to set five appointments per day? Four days a week. Okay. You know, and, and, and really what we're looking at, guys, is, is you're looking at having about 20 appointments scheduled, which means you're going to have to talk to about 40 people. In order to talk to 40 people, you're going to have to make at least 600 phone calls. So it has to be a system. You have to make sure that we have the time set aside to make these 600 phone calls. So you can do it to where you do 150 on Monday, 150 on Thursday, and then 100 on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And there's your 600 during the week. You could set it up, whatever is the best, best for you and your system. But if you have a system to make the 600 calls, you know, that's the first thing. But there's so many different ways to break this down, okay? But teaching somebody how to write 2,000 a week should be pretty basic leaning on the system of just getting just getting five set per day four days a week just getting four set per day five days a week scoring four so try and keep it simple nothing crazy 
And, 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 and guess what? If you can teach somebody how to do that, number one, if you can do it yourself, then you can teach somebody how to do it. And if you could teach somebody how to do that, then you just taught somebody how to do 2,000. And as you taught somebody to do 2,000 a week, you taught them how to do 8,000 a month. It's just a consistency now. And if you can teach them how to do the 8,000 a month, then you taught them how to do 24,000 over 90 days, right? Sure. And, and here's the thing is, you're a supervisor, right? So you know how to become a supervisor because you just did it. You just became a supervisor, right? So you should be able to teach them how to become a supervisor. And then when they become supervisors, then they go on the same exact path that you were just on. And they're teaching their people how to do the same thing. And you just taught them how to do it. So it works great. A supervisor is someone with a team of about one to five people one to five people. Okay. The supervisor will make 50 to, uh, or will make 75 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, if you're a supervisor with five people and each person does 2000, what does your team do? 10,000. Okay. You are going to make 10% of whatever your team does per week. So if your team's doing about 10,000 a week, then you're going to make about $1,000 per week. If you do 2,000 a week yourself, then you're going to make what? $1,000, right? So your team makes you 1,000, you make, that's how you make 2,000. Let's say your team only did 5,000, then you made 500. So you'll make 1,000 off yourself, 500 off the team, there's 1,500 which is about $80,000 a year. If you make $1,500 a week, it's about $80,000 a year. Right? So supervisor team should be doing five, maybe 10,000 a week on average, somewhere between there, and you're doing at least 2,000. That's where these numbers come from. Now, some supervisors go up teams way bigger than five, but that's average. Average GA is a team of five to 10 people. Average GA, team of five to 10 people. Now, if you have 10 people and you're a GA and they're all doing 2,000 a week, now your team's doing 20,000 a week. The GA makes over 12.5%. So in that situation, the GA would make $2,500 off the team. The GA makes 12.5%. We're talking about a team of five to 10. Let's say you got a team of 10 all doing 2,000. It means your team did 20,000, right? Does that make sense? And then you still go right 2,000 yourself as a GA and you make $1,000. And now you made 3,500 for the week. That's why we like to see the GA income between two and 3,000 per week on average. GAs are making two to 3,000. 100 to 150. When you go from a GA to the MGA, the MGA is a team of, of, of 10 people plus. So let's call it 10 to 15. Okay. If you have 15 people doing 2,000 a week, your team is doing 30,000 a week. An MGA team should be doing 30,000 a week. 30,000 a week. The MGA makes 15% of the total team ALP. So the MGA off of 30 grand will make $4,500. And the MGA should be making 150,000 plus. So even if you're an MGA and your team only does 20 grand, you're still making three grand a week without writing any business at all. Right? So those are, that's the way that shakes, shakes out. Now, let's say you're an MGA for, for, now you're an MGA for a year and you do $1 million in your first year. You're going to make 15% of that, which means you're going to make 150,000 in your first year. Okay. Plus if you were a personal business on the side, if you were another two grand a week, you'd make another 50 grand over there at least because you're on an MGA contract. And then the next year you become an RGA, okay? And you promote somebody and they do a million dollars as well. And then you still do a million dollars. 
That means your team did how much? Two million. Two million, right? So what, what's your bonus, Gio? Is it is it 15% on the growth, right? 15%, yep. 15%. So whatever you grow in your second year of becoming an MGA, guys, whatever you grow, you get 15% bonus mm -hmm. on. So imagine your first year, you did a million, but in your second year, you do 2 million, okay? You're going to get a 15% bonus on that. So what's 15% million of that million dollar growth? 15% bonus on that million dollar growth? 150,000. And then you're able to qualify for a 35% bonus boost on that, right? So that turns into $200,000 of bonus money on top yeah. of the 150 that you made before. So you go from making 150 to 200 to making double that the following year, 300,000 the following year. Oh, plus, plus he's the RGA over that MGA. And you're making another 10% on that. So you're going to make 250 in your upfront income plus another uh, 150 in bonus money. So that's 400 grand. So first year, you make 150. Second year, you make 400. Third year, third year, now that MGA that you promoted, they're getting growth bonuses. And you're the RGA. So whatever growth bonus they get, you get. So take another 150 on top of that. And if he grows by another, if he goes from one to two, and if he goes from two to three, two to three, you're going to go from 150 to 400 to 550. That's the next three years of income for you, bro. And that's growing by a million dollars a year, which is nothing. So anyways, guys, I got to hop on a meeting with Natalie and Fred right now. I didn't mean to hop off prompt, uh, promptly like that, but I, I wanted to get into this and I'll keep going over this with us because I want us to get into these numbers a little bit and start seeing the vision because uh, we got to start making this vision a reality quicker you know, sooner and start getting you guys there, man. This money is sitting out there. There's people just cashing in, raking it in left and right. But don't forget, nothing happens without us selling some life insurance. That's the first thing that we got to do. We got to be beast at selling life insurance and everything else takes care of itself. But we don't even got to sell life insurance because that shit sells itself, right? Yes, Especially right now. Let's go. Yes, come, on. come on. Let's go get Thanks, it. I appreciate you. If you need anything, I'm right here. All right. I'll see you guys later. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're right, yeah.